You guys might not recognize me from last time because I have bangs, but that's okay, girl, because I think I look kind of fleeky. I'm here today to talk to you guys about my acne story and just answer some common questions that I get asked and yeah, just to chat. Um, so basically, I started getting acne probably around when I was 20 is when I started getting like severe cystic acne. But before that, like when I was in high school, I would just get like a spot here and there. It was never really anything that I was worried about or that made me feel uncomfortable. But when I hit 20, I started getting like severe cystic acne. Like it would be under the skin, like this one for example, and it would last for months. Like literally last so long and no matter what I did, it would not get off my face. And I can tell you guys right now that I didn't have any changes in diet. I didn't have any changes in stress. I had no changes in hormones. I've been on the same birth control for like years. Um, so yeah, it just happened. And I think for me, that was really hard to like digest because if I didn't do anything to cause it, I felt like for some reason it was my fault that I had really bad acne. Um, but yeah, so basically, I remember just sitting there one day in class at university and looking around at everyone else's skin and wondering why no one else had any marks on their face or had any blemishes and <laughs> I don't know for some reason I was just really upset that the fact that <laughs> I just felt so uncomfortable about my skin, but then other people could just go out. I used to never not wear makeup. Like now I, I honestly, like I never wear makeup, but I used to be the exact opposite. I used to like always go out with a full face. Like I wouldn't even, probably for the first couple years, I wouldn't even let my husband see me without makeup. I don't know if that's normal or not, but I just didn't feel comfortable with it. Uh, but yeah, I would sit there in class and literally look at everyone else's skin and be like, why, like no one else has any problems and I did not understand why. I finally decided after probably almost a year of having severe cystic acne that I was gonna go on Accutane because nothing else was working for my skin. Um, I tried several creams, I tried antibiotics, I tried eating like all natural, all vegan, I tried all natural skin products and for some reason just nothing, nothing worked and my dermatologist told me that if I kept prolonging it that my skin and my scarring was only gonna get worse. So she was like, you're gonna add Accutane now. And I was like, okay. So I did that and so I was on 60 milligrams um, a month for six months. And honestly, I feel like that, it was pretty good. The only thing is that they tell you once you've gone Accutane that your skin will be clear forever and that it will be amazing and great and like it's no problem. But I feel like on my body personally, it was pretty hard. Like just feeling physically exhausted all the time. And I would wake up in the mornings and it like just to turn over in bed would take me probably about 10 minutes. Like it makes you feel <laughs> like really old. It's not that I regret it. I just think that there's a little bit of falseness put onto what Accutane does. I think that it is really good for treating cystic acne. Obviously my skin looks pretty clear now besides the scarring and I'll have like occasional breakouts like this one but I had like really 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 high expectations I was like you know I'm I'm never gonna break out like ever again <laughs> but yeah so then after Accutane now I've been using obviously I've been using Banish um, and I feel like my scars really have improved especially just like the texture and the skin tone like it used to be where you could see every single divot and now I feel like it just looks a lot smoother. Like I never wear makeup anymore and I, like I said before, I would have never have done that before. Like every single day I wore a full face of makeup. Um, and now, ooh, and now I like almost never wear makeup. So for me to say that, I feel like really confident in my skin I feel like is a huge step. So I've been using Banish and it's been working really really well to fade my scars and I'm super happy about it because I would have never felt that comfortable enough before to go out without out makeup and it's not like I didn't feel confident because for me confidence isn't about outer beauty, confidence is about what you take pride in doing. Um, like my family always 
really focused on school and I've always really been focused on art. So for me to be good at like school and be close with my family and to be good at art, I feel like that's what makes me confident. It's not all about outer beauty. Although that's what people want you to think. It's really not. I have these questions here that I can answer that people asked me last time. And if you heard it before, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna answer them again. Okay, so what brought about my acne? Like I said, I had no changes in my diet. I had no changes in my birth control. Had no changes in my stress levels. Like, I've always been really healthy. I always like eat at home and I work, work out pretty consistently. Um, I used to run a lot more, I will say that, but I still do get a, plenty of exercise. I'm on my feet all day at work. I probably do like 10, 12 miles a day. So yeah, nothing like specifically brought about my acne. It just happened. And that was super hard for me to like accept that it can just happen <laughs> because it's like really there, there's no other answer. Um, other than the fact that from what I've been told, my dad had really bad acne when he was in his 20s and then it went away. And I've never seen my dad have a, have a blemish or even have any scarring. So I really do think, and I'm hoping, that I'll just have really bad acne in my 20s and then it'll go away. Cause bye Felicia, no one wants you here. Um, how long did have I suffered with acne? So I have suffered with acne, like I said, when I was in high school, but it never really bothered me then because I felt like everyone had acne. <laughs> it's high school, we're all teenagers, we have like raging hormones. Um, but once I turned 20, then yeah, I definitely started getting cysts. And like I said, at first I had no clue what they were. Um, I would just get like one and it wouldn't go away. And then I'd get another one. I had one literally right here and I remember it and I'm so surprised it did not scar. I had one right here for probably um, six months like a really long time and I tried everything to make it go away and it just it wouldn't go it was there to stay why did I decide to go on Accutane I decided to go on Accutane because my acne was so severe uh, like I said when I had just a couple pimples here and there I always 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 thought that that was just normal that's how you know it's supposed to be I was never really anyone to like obsess over my skin <laughs> But yeah, so I decided to go on Accutane um, because I had exhausted every single option and nothing was working for me. Like, not even, like my, I, <laughs> my friend said this to me and I feel like this is so true, like my skin laughs at salicylic acid. Like, it does not work. Why did I start my My Face Story Instagram? So, I initially, I think my profile was private at first too, sorry. I'm like trying to get used to these bangs. I literally just got these cut today and I know I like can't do that because I look crazy, but um, so I started my Instagram because um, I wanted to keep track of my progress on Accutane and I really do, I think I had it private at first and I was too embarrassed to ask my dermatologist for before and after pictures. Like I remember seeing someone like acne.org or something like that of someone like completely covered in cysts and then their face completely clear. And I was like, wow, like I really want like before and after pictures and I wonder what's a good way to like, not like express myself, but just to track my progress. And that is when I started my Instagram, my face story. And then now I feel like it's turned more into tracking my acne scar progress and then just getting more into, I really like DIY stuff, <laughs> like DIY beauty and just like, you know, that cheap beauty stuff that's good, good. How do I stay confident with acne? Like I said before, my confidence has never really been about my outer appearance. It's always been about other things like how I'm doing in school or how things are going at home or how close I am with my family, stuff like that, or like my art, how I'm doing with art. So for me, confidence is more about um, your achievements and how you're feeling about yourself and how you're doing in life. It's not really about focusing so much on the physical appearance. What's the difference between cystic nodular acne and regular breakouts? And I feel like this is something that definitely needs to be addressed because people are always like, why don't you just do X, Y, Z? I've heard, why don't you just wash your face? Um, why does your skin look so bad? 
Um, do you ever wash your face? Why don't you just try proactive? I've heard that. I've heard, uh, why don't you try rodent fields? Why don't you um, just use tea tree oil? Why don't you just use, which, which I do use both of those and they do work pretty well. Um, but I will say that not every single person is the same and what works for one person may not specifically work for another person. That's why there's so many different brands and so many different things, you know? Which isn't a bad thing, but I feel like there's a huge misconception because when it comes to cystic acne, cystic acne is like deep in the skin and it doesn't have a head. This one was cystic, it's like pretty flat now. Um, but I've had this for like about a week. It lasts a really long time. It'll be really sore to the touch to the point where you might feel as if, if you smile or laugh, like it might, I know it sounds gross, but it might like burst. <laughs> Like cystic acne is super deep. I know, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I like laugh, um, when I used to have it really bad, it would explode. And I remember sitting in class one time and that exact thing happened. Me and my friend were talking and all of a sudden, cause I have, obviously I had them like all over my cheeks. I was laughing and they literally like popped open and I had to run to the bathroom and I was like crying because I was like, what the heck, what is, what's happening to my face? So yeah, anyways, the difference between cystic acne and regular acne, cystic acne is deep rooted in your skin, it's sensitive to the touch, it's not gonna go away with just why don't you do this, this, and this. It's usually something that's like an internal problem or something that needs to be treated by like a medical professional. Um, it's not something you can just wash your face. <laughs> Whereas regular acne, it's just, you know, your sebum clogging your pores. It'll go away in like a day or two. Technically, three to seven days it'll go away. What causes acne scarring? Another another misconception, y'all, because I totally thought when my mom told me, she was like, if you pick your acne, it'll scar, don't pick it. I did not pick a single one, I swear, I swear, I did not pick a single one, and it's still scarred. So, what causes scarring is that it'll be so deep and it'll prolong for so long that it'll actually stretch out the collagen fibers that are in your skin. Um, and that's what causes the scarring because it'll kind of make this like divot since the collagen fibers got stretched out. So, I mean, picking obviously can make things worse, but it has more to do with the deepness of it and the length or the severity of it. What is my skincare routine post Accutane? As you know, I've been using Vanish and I love it. I just feel like it's helped tons with the redness, especially in my cheeks. It's helped with the texture, it's helped with my skin tone. Um, so yeah, I use the Vanish starter kit, which has like the pumpkin enzyme mask, the charcoal mask, Vanish oil, the roller, the pin stamp, and then I've also been doing like the DIY stuff, if you guys seen it on my Instagram or not, I've been using like that DIY witch hazel and apple cider vinegar toner, which is pH safe because I tested it, so I'm not going to burn my face off and it'll be okay. And then I've also been using um, like a DIY oil blend of like jojoba oil and um, almond seed oil and stuff like that, which is also super good for your skin. So if you haven't tried that, you should try that as well. Um, dating for me. I get this question a lot too about um, dating or having boyfriends and like I said before I'm married so um, This one's like a little bit harder for me to answer But there was a time when we first started dating where my acne wasn't even bad But I still didn't want him to see me without makeup. I think that was just like the um, Not misconception but what I saw in movies or like what I had been taught is like, you know, you're always supposed to like be 100% and you're always supposed to look good for guys. You're supposed to be super feminine. But honestly, like none of that stuff matters. <laughs> you can be and do whatever you want and like you do not have to wear makeup. Um, but dating for me or I guess being married for me, it was, I mean, I never felt like I was judged, but I kind of on the inside, I guess, I felt like I let him down. I know I didn't do anything to bring it about my face, but it was like, sometimes I'd be worried, like what if he, you know, obviously, hopefully nobody would ever divorce someone over that, that's terrible. But I did feel like maybe I let him down because I felt bad that my acne had gotten so bad, even though I hadn't done anything about it. 
so yeah um so <laughs> I'm like getting tripped up here <laughs> I guess being married with acne was a lot different because I did have that sense of security and that sense of stability where I knew at the end of the day he was going to be there and he was super supportive. He never once ever made me feel bad. If anything, he would tell me I was over exaggerating. And I'm like, you don't have to say that. Like, you really don't have to say that. Um, because I knew that it looked, I knew that it looked pretty bad. And for him to be like, oh, you're over exaggerating. It doesn't really look that bad. I'm like, can you be serious with me? Um, but yeah, so I guess being married with acne, I felt uncomfortable about it, but he never made me feel bad about it. He was always really supportive, and that's what you need, because I've heard all these horror stories. Always be with someone who's going to support you, no matter what, because it's not about what's out here, it's about what's in here, and that, that is so true. I know it sounds so cheesy, but it is so true. Because you, like I said last time, you could be the prettiest, most good looking person ever on the outside but if you have no content on the inside then what it doesn't matter what really matters is what's on the inside uh, besides Accutane what else has helped with my acne obviously Vanish has helped um, apple cider vinegar <laughs> has helped my acne using essential oils and then like oils like I said before jojoba oil and stuff like that has helped oh yes I love this question I got this question today actually so this is new how to handle harsh judgment or advices so like I said before when people are like um, why don't you just do X Y and Z like I don't understand for that, all I have to say is that people are going to judge you no matter what, so just do whatever makes you happy because the minute you start letting other people's um, judgment influence your life, then you're letting them influence the way that you think that you act and you're not going to be happy and you're not going to feel like yourself. So definitely just take it with a grain of salt or don't take it at all <laughs> um, because I definitely from putting myself out there on social media, I have experienced some harsh judgment. Um, and a lot of people, their judgment is ignorance because they don't understand because they've never dealt with acne or severe cystic acne themselves. So really don't let it get you down. And with advices, I would say when people try to give advice, most likely, I don't think it's coming from a bad place. I think that they are telling you what has helped from them from them what has helped them with their acne and so they want you to know um, you know maybe if you try this I don't I know it can be really annoying really <laughs> really annoying but I think when people give advice on acne it really is coming from a good place and they're not trying to be malicious at all so um, and sometimes like I never thought that natural organic skincare example like vanish like I was like oh that's not gonna work like there's products that are specifically targeted to treat your skin and that's what I should be using but I was completely wrong like I feel like natural products is definitely the way to go because it will target the one specific thing and get rid of it whereas when you're using the over-the-counter stuff or really anything in beauty stores has so many different chemicals pumped into it the products will like target one thing but then it'll cause another problem for example, when I was using Retin A before, it helped. It was helping with my scarring, but then it was causing like a severe rash around my mouth. So I feel like that's with a lot of acne products. Like maybe it'll help with your scars, but then it'll maybe make you break out. With natural products, really, if it's good enough to eat, like it's good enough to put on your skin. Or at least that's how I feel. What really made me want to go on Accutane also was that, and I really, I don't, I hope they don't watch this because I don't want them to feel bad because I know that it wasn't like maliciously intended. But my nephew, when I had gone on vacation, like I said before, I used to never ever go anywhere without my makeup off. And I would, at night, I would make sure like everyone was asleep and then I would wash my makeup off and I would like run to bed, you know, or like cover my face with like a towel or something. And so I was on vacation and I thought everyone was asleep and my nephew who was probably like, he was probably like three or four at the time, he looked at me and he was like, why is your face dirty? 
after I had washed my makeup off. And I knew what he meant and I like cried so hard after that because I just thought my face isn't dirty but it feels like it's dirty and it hurts really bad. And for someone to say that, I was just like, really kid, really? You gotta, you gotta go there. God. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> Your skin is coming along amazingly. Thank you! You're so beautiful, girl. Thank you, girl, thank you! Ah! Thumbs up. I'm giving you both thumbs up. Um, how to get rid of face pockets really quick. I would say that it's probably not going to be really quick if it's a textured thing. Um, it's definitely going to take time, but I would try using the banisher because that's going to induce the collagen along with the vitamin C serum because the vitamin C serum will also help <laughs> to induce the collagen. You need to use them both together, um, at least the vitamin C serum. The banisher will help to get it penetrated deeper, uh, but yeah, I don't think that they'll be able to go away really quick. It's something that you definitely have to be patient with. Um, do I think derma rollers work? Yes, I do. And I was really, really skeptical about it at first because I thought, why, like, how? Um, <laughs> but I've done like a lot of research and a lot of reading about it and they definitely do work and I can tell you like you can look on my Instagram my face story oh boy, oh boy. Um, or I mean you can just look at other results from skin needling obviously you're gonna get faster results if you go to a professional because they have a deeper needle but it will also make your skin bleed and you also might have a little bit of downtime but yes I definitely do think that derma rollers work because they induce like I said they induce the collagen production and um, I've now been using mine for about four months, and I mean, when I'm back here, like, you can't even see anything. And that's crazy to me. Like, it looks just clear. Derma rollers are also a really good, cheap alternative if you don't have money, or like, if you can't afford, for example, a uh, college student over here, I cannot afford, like, lasers, $3,000 that may or may not work, and then I'll have to get two more sessions. And I don't want to spend my money on something that might not work. I think it's better to just like accept yourself <laughs> and your scars with how they are and then if they get better that's awesome and if they don't that's awesome too. Like you're beautiful girl, okay? You're beautiful. Just remember that having like severe cystic acne or any acne at all if you're trying- oh you're welcome girl! Thank you! You're beautiful too! I love you! Um, if you have severe cystic acne or any acne at all, just remember that you're doing all that you can and that is not your fault. From my experience from working in a place of beauty, people who have skin problems probably like wash their face, do facials, use serums, creams, etc. more than anyone else. So you're doing all that you can, it's not your fault. Anyone that loves you or that cares about you is going to love you regardless of what your skin looks like. like that should be the least of their concern because, like I said before, what really matters is what's right here. Okay, so I said this last time, but I honestly, I love this quote so much by Dr. Seuss. He's got it down, y'all. Um, he says that those that matter don't mind and those that mind don't matter. Boom! So those that care about you aren't going to care if you have a few red spots that are unconventionally unattractive on your face. And those that do care, bye, they don't matter at all, I promise. They are not supposed to be in your lives. They do not matter, goodbye. Um, okay, so the other thing I was gonna do, I um, was gonna try to think of more stories. And then I was going to derma roll since I already have to roll tonight anyways. I figured why not roll on here. And then a lot of people always ask me like if it hurts and stuff. No, it doesn't hurt at all. I really love this. It's, it's really nice. It's really attractive. So I'm just gonna use the pore smasher first. Oh, I watched um, another uh, another girl who uses Banish, one of her videos, and she was talking about um, how her boyfriend made her feel really bad about her skin. And exactly like I said, those who mind don't matter because now she's married to someone else and she's like, 
screw that guy, you know? He don't matter. And this basically just like, I used this before a roll because it slightly numbs your face. And then it also helps with redness. That's, okay, that's another thing. Ever since I took Accutane, like, blessing and a curse because I didn't know that I was gonna get scars because it thins out your skin so bad. But then now I'm using Banish, so hey, guess it all worked out. But I get hot flashes, like during the day. And if anyone knows, please comment because I do not know why. It'll be like between 2 and maybe 5 p.m. My face is just like beet red like a tomato. And I have no clue why. Girl! You get hot flashes too! Okay, do you know why? Because I need to know. It's still happening. Yeah, I don't know why either. I've noticed I get them when I'm extremely tired. So like after I eat lunch, that like 2 o'clock feeling, I get them. Or I get them if I'm like feeling stressed. Yeah, well I'm here to tell you that they don't go away. I don't know why, but I still get them. And also, I saw you earlier on Snapchat screenshotting my pictures and I need to know why because I'm feeling a little self-conscious about it. Was it the bangs? Were the bangs getting to you? Yeah, maybe mine's nervous too. I don't know. I could see that. I got one today when I was waiting in line and maybe I felt nervous, but I also felt really hot because I was wearing a scarf. So I'm gonna roll because, like I said, I gotta do it anyways. And I have like a little breakout right here. So I'm just gonna go like, basically just on my cheeks. I used to have some really bad right here, but the banisher has pretty much taken them away. So I don't really feel like I need to roll up there. And I got the bangs now, so I can just go like this. Goodbye. And a lot of people ask me before too, does this hurt? No, it does not hurt. Um, I will say that my face gets super red though, just because ginger skin. And I really try to like... I mean, you're not, don't like push down super hard, but I give it a little bit of pressure just to make sure that I'm like getting in there since I'm not gonna do it for another two weeks, you know? Let me know if you guys have any more questions or anything that you want me to talk about or answer because honestly, I just, I love talking. I can't shut up and that's that. I love answering your questions too, obviously, to the best of my ability, to my knowledge and what I know. So like when you roll, you just wanna go four times in each direction. Um, and obviously my scars, you'll see, they'll get way more prominent when my face gets red. And I'm making sure that I'm avoiding this like breakout area. Which I can tell you guys that I figured out the code. My breakouts are stress, for sure. 10 out of 10 would say stress, because I've had a very stressful, <laughs> very stressful <laughs> past 24 hours. And um, I've ate really good. Like I said, if you follow me on Snapchat, I've said I ate like a sandwich and salmon and asparagus and rice. And then today I had sushi that was like raw, like not fried or anything that was bad for you and I broke out and my hormones are balanced I've been on Accutane I've been on cream birth control so I definitely think mine is stress and I need to find like besides art which is awesome I need to find another outlet for my stress I feel like I had something else to say earlier I don't know, we'll see if it comes to me. But look, that look, I mean, I feel like it looks so plump. Well, be so, I mean, obviously that's a little, a little plump, but I feel like it looks so good. Oh, I remember what I was gonna say. Um, so like, when I finally, like recently, I haven't worn makeup except for Valentine's Day and maybe one other day. 
in like almost like over a month I haven't worn makeup and like I feel like it's different if you're in a big city where it's more accepting maybe not to wear makeup um, but when you're in a smaller place and a much more judgmental place like Kentucky <laughs> you can imagine <laughs> um, people definitely stare at you or like look at you funny like why isn't she wearing makeup so yeah if you do live in a big city let me know your experience with that because I feel like I've gotten more looks recently and I definitely got looks before because again um, I don't know when we first moved here oh okay I have a question. I know where you're on Accutane. It's different. I had bad cystic acne for two years. I started using the Acne Order two months ago. It's some wonders I wish I knew about before. I do. Oops. Don't have any pimples no more, but I'm left with acne scars. When do you think it's okay for me to start rolling? Um, I think that you can. Sorry, I just like whisper. I just like whispered that. Um, I think you can start rolling anytime as long as your skin's clear. The only reason I had to wait six months to start rolling is because I was on Accutane um, and my skin was so thin that you have to wait to do any more abrasive treatments or else you might further damage your skin. But as long you said you just used acne.org, then you should be fine. You can roll anytime. And you can actually use, they have a pen stamp too, if you still have any active spots, which I'll probably end up showing you guys because I have a couple active spots right now that I need to go around. We'll just get right in there. Okay. Yeah, so you can do it anytime, you'll be fine, I promise. And then this, so this is the pen stamp. So like I said, I have a break out right here. So I'm just gonna like, oh, literally stamp it. So that I can get closer. And then some other parts where I just wanna get like a more controlled. And then I have a deeper one over here. So I'm gonna do these ones again. Like, sorry I couldn't read your guys' comments. I could, literally could not figure that out for the life of me. I'm techni technologically challenged. I'm like never on social media. I'm really bad about it. Um, but I hope that I was able to answer like some of your guys' questions or like, you know, you took some advice maybe? <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Hopefully you feel enlightened. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's all I got. And now I'm gonna put on the Banish Oil, which used to be called the Vitamin C Serum. If any of you guys have used this before, it's amazing. And compared to other Vitamin C Serums I've used too, you can tell that it's good quality Ooh, because of the consistency. It feels like an oil, it feels a lot thicker. And a lot of the other ones I've used feel really thin. Um, and the smell too, you can tell that it's natural. It doesn't have any like fragrances or dyes or anything like that, which is good. Cause you don't need to put that on your skin, girl. Okay, so if you guys have any last questions, or comments or anything, I will answer them, and then I will be leaving. But I had so much fun just talking to you guys. Yeah, I just started Acne.org. I was thinking of Accutane until it come from this. I have banished your like some months ago. Only use it three or four times. But since I have had active blemishes, I stopped. Do you think the one I have still works? 
Um, so you do want to replace the banisher about every four uses. Um, so, I mean, it's more of a sanitary measure and the fact that the needles will get dull. So, if you replace it every four times, I guess like the needles, you know, they won't be as dull, they'll be sharper, and in theory, they'll go deeper. So I would say replace it. I have heard of, pe I will say I have heard of people stretching it out to five or six times, but don't go past that. Like do not use it any more than that. Um, but yeah, the recommended amount is, uh, I think it's three, or three to four times. Okay. Yeah, no problem, girl. No problem. Uh, so like I said before, oh. Have I ever thought about microdermabrasion for my scars? It does help. Yeah, I have. And we do have an esthetician at my work and we have thought about doing that before. And we also have like a chemical peel type thing that we've thought about doing. But I did do some research. I know like I've heard a couple people saying that it helps. But from reading online, people have said that it's not an appropriate treatment for acne scars. So I'm not really sure, I'm torn about it. I might still try it anyways and then let you guys know how I feel about it. Um, I just gotta save up the funds and then I will let you know. Um, have you done it before? Do you think that it's helped your skin? Because I know another girl who does it and she said she did weekly ones and that's the only thing is like, I don't know if I could be spending like $100 a week to do it. Maybe if it was like once a month. So, yeah, you do think it helps. Okay, well that's awesome. Then I definitely will need to try it because I was pretty skeptical about that. But yeah, I'll have to try that then for sure. Just remember what I'm gonna leave you guys with is, okay, yeah, once a month isn't bad. No, that's definitely doable. Yeah, I'll have to try that for sure then. Thank you, girl. Um, so what I want to leave you guys with is that your acne physically cannot last forever. Like, it has to go at some point. And then also just to be nice to yourself and love yourself because worrying about it does nothing and stressing out about it does nothing except for maybe make it worse. <laughs> and, yeah, just learn to love yourself because you're beautiful and you're unique and you're you for a reason and you're supposed to be on this earth for a reason, you know? And like I said before, don't forget that Dr. Seuss quote because it is literally my favorite quote ever. Those who matter don't mind and those who mind don't matter. And all right guys, have a good night and I love you. Okay, bye. There's a hope that's waiting for you.